In this video, I'm going to be going over a magic healing build for Warlock. As far as perks and skills go, you're going to want Torture Mastery. You won't get any magic healing if you don't have this. This makes it to where Curse of Pain and Power of Sacrifice are going to heal you. Curse of Pain and Power of Sacrifice will each heal you by default for one health every tick of damage that they do. But for each magic healing you get, that's going to increase by the amount of magic healing. So if you have 10 magic healing, you're going to heal 10 HP per tick. Next, I would suggest Malice. This is going to increase your spell damage by a little bit. I wouldn't say this is extremely important, but your other options don't necessarily work very well as a Warlock. There aren't great perks right now for it. Dark Reflection. I would say this is definitely essential because... In this build, you really want to draw an out fight, and you might proc Dark Reflection multiple times in one fight. Essentially, what you're going to be doing is using Phantom Eyes to get away when people get too close and just keep poking them with Power of Sacrifice and Curse of Pain, mainly Curse of Pain. So that way, you're always just poking and restoring your health if you get hit every once in a while, it won't matter too much because you're just going to heal it all back up. But eventually, whoever you're fighting isn't going to have that capability. Whereas you can infinitely heal with magic healing. Anyone else is not going to be able to outlast you in a really drawn out fight. So that's basically what you're going to be doing with the magic healing build. Is just trying to draw out the fight as long as possible. And keep poking with curse of pain and power of sacrifice you can also throw in hellfires and on top of that i would definitely say that you should have a weapon that has good range like a halberd so that you can keep people at bay when they do get close force it to where if they get close they're going to have to take a hit in order to come in at you and really more than anything you're just going to be using your halberd to Keep them at bay until you get phantomized back, or until they back off enough to where you can switch to a spellbook and cast more curses on them. Swapping to melee in this build though is really your last resort, or if you just know that someone is very close to dying, you can swap to melee and finish them off for the burst damage. But in general, play very defensive melee. Aside from magic healing, you probably want to have max health as your next most important because max health is going to allow you to just survive whatever and it's going to make you get way more mileage out of the magic healing strength is also decent it's going to increase your max health and of course it's going to increase your weapon damage by a little bit as well knowledge i would say is probably the next most important because knowledge is going to let you cast faster and being able to cast your curses really quickly is going to be really good for kiting people which that's all you're going to be doing is trying to kite people as much as possible then you're definitely going to want move speed a marauder outfit or a warden outfit is going to be your best in slot for this because it only has move speed minus 10 and then the one agility is going to give you one of that move speed back as well. This Marauder outfit isn't great, but a lot of times you can find really good discount Marauder outfits in Rogue. Because you can find like spell casting speed, max HP, magic damage, things like that. Or very cheap because people think that it's a garbage roll, but really a Warlock can use it as well, so... If you go into Rogue Trade, you can find Marauder outfits for pretty cheap that will be good for your build a lot. For the gloves, Rawhide gloves are pretty good because they're going to increase your curse damage as well as your casting speed by a bit. Rivety gloves are also great because they're going to give you strength and increase your HP by a little bit. And also the leather gloves are not bad just for giving you the agility one extra movement speed, but I would say I prefer rawhide gloves over the other two. Lightfoot boots 
definitely very important because you want the move speed. You want to be really fast with this build because you're going to be kiting people. Um, for the leggings, probably padded leggings would be good. Heavy leather are nice because they're only three less move speed than padded leggings, but you also get two HP. So really, depending on whether you want the HP or the casting speed and magic damage, that's what's going to determine whether you want rawhide or riveted or heavy leather or padded leggings. The boots, I would say, always light foot boots, though. For cape and amulets and rings, just go for magic healing, spell casting speed, HP. Same things if you have the money to afford all attributes. Of course, all attributes is going to be better than any of those things. But strength, HP, and casting speed are your priorities with this. Back to the perks though. Anti-magic would probably be your best for your next slot. You are going to take damage but from magic while you're in Phantomize, you're actually going to take more damage from magic, so keep that in mind. You can't really use Phantomize very well against wizards in particular, so anti-magic is going to be your best for one of your slots. In order of importance, I would call it Torture Mastery, Dark Reflection, probably anti-magic, and then Malice. Dark Enhancement doesn't actually work on your curses right now. It only works on Dark Reflection, so you're just going to get a very small damage increase to Dark Reflection. Immortal Lament makes it to where casting can't take you below 1 HP. It's not really going to be a problem with magic healing. I would just bring a couple potions if you ever get in the scenario by chance that you have not enough HP to cast Curse of Pain or something. Right now I have 9 magic healing, and getting hit by enemies can pretty quickly heal up whatever you got hurt for. See that I'm already full healed from the damage that I took from that skeleton. You're just going to be casting Curse of Pain in PvP and keeping your distance. You can cast Hellfire for zoning as well. Hellfire will really be mostly for zoning, though. And then if anyone gets really close to you, you're going to want to phantomize. You can also cast Power of Sacrifice, and that will double the amount of healing you're doing effectively. So essentially, you want to try to keep your distance from someone, and continually cast Curse of Pain on them. Once someone starts chasing you, just put your spell book away with X and then run away. Or if they use their movement ability and you know they're going to catch you, you can phantomize. Learn the spacing of Curse of Pain and just keep max distance while you continually cast and try to hit someone with it. Power of Sacrifice can be a little easier to hit because it is a hit scan, but you can also self cast it like I did here, which isn't a big deal as long as you hit someone with a curse afterwards. Again, this build excels the most at kiting, so here when I get third partied, I want to wait until this barbarian uses his move ability so he can try to catch me, and then I'm going to phantomize to outrun him and get the spacing that I want. Then I can start casting curses at him. Between every curse, you're going to want to turn away from them and press W to just run as far as possible. And even if you get chipped away at while you're running away, like this barbarian came prepared with a lot of Francisca axes, so he was just throwing them at me as I ran. Even though I got hit by one, it wasn't a big deal because I just kept kiting and trying to cast Curse of Pain. While you're kiting, if you are low health and you don't have the enemy in sight, you can also use PvE enemies to just get your health back. This barbarian was smart here and stayed in a very close quarters environment to where it was too risky for me to pursue him and also use the enemies to his advantage. If you get a ton of enemies on you with this build, it's not a big deal. Just kite the enemies, cast Curse of Pain, Power of Sacrifice, you'll be back up to full health in no time. And then you can just hellfire the enemies as they chase you. Something to keep in mind with this build is that you're very vulnerable to being one-shotted by, say, another warlock with Blow of Corruption, 
or a barbarian with the Achilles strike if they hit you in the head. So you really don't want to take any close quarters engages. Play your advantage and make sure that the enemy comes to your environment. Close quarters is extremely risky unless you have phantom eyes up and you know you can get out before you get hit. And you also know that the enemy won't be able to run you down. Your advantages with this build are open areas and elevated terrain. You're also able to heal up very easily while moving. So if you end up having to run into an area and have a line of enemies chasing you, that can actually be beneficial to you. It can make it to where whoever was pursuing can't approach as easily. And you getting hit by the enemies just won't be a big deal because you can very easily cast Curse of Pain and Power of Sacrifice to get all of your health back. The way you want to play this with a team or against a team is very similar. You will take trades, you want to take trades. So say you have to get shot by an arrow in order to cast Curse of Pain. That's a great trade for you because it essentially won't do anything to you. Even if you get hit, you can use PvE to heal up. And if you manage to land Curse of Pain on the enemy when you get hit, then you can wait for your health to go up and keep applying pressure. And again, as a last resort, if someone is going to catch you and you know it's going to happen, you can swap to your halberd and just try to keep them at bay. Use it very defensively. I will say too, if it's a 1v1 with an archer, you can use phantomize to just get right up to the archer and then come out of phantomize and use your halberd to take them down. The plague is your friend here. You can run around the plague indefinitely while casting Curse of Pain on enemies. So if anyone does happen to pursue you into the plague, that's a huge advantage for you. The most dangerous opponents in this build are going to be barbarians because they have so much magic resistance and so much health. In general, they're also going to be very fast. Rangers and wizards are going to be the second worst. With a wizard, try to take trades. So wizards love to be mid-range. You want to be mid-range as well and cast your Curse of Pain as a trade for a zap or maybe even a fireball and then you want to get out of range very quickly but in general i would say just don't pressure a wizard wait for an opportunity to get very close and melee or try to use terrain in order to poke them and trade with them if you start losing to a wizard and you think you're going to die just run away and use your environment to heal try to leave yourself an out so that you can run away and then heal on your environment which can really be effective for most fights. If I had to summarize how to use this build, you just have to be defensive, try to play mid-range, and you want to poke and take trades if necessary. The major weakness of this build is burst damage because you won't be able to outheal, say, someone who's just latched onto you meleeing. That's the last scenario that you want to get yourself into. But say someone gets one swing on you and doesn't kill you, that's fine. As of right now, the Warlock is not a great class for PvP, but using a build like this, or a Blow of Corruption build, will allow you to hang in there up to a pretty high level of play as a Warlock still. A final note, using Curse of Pain and Hellfire is probably the best PvE build in the game currently. Anyways, that's it for this video.